Following the break, then we'll have the 15-minute cross-examinations. Uh, right now, Mr. Qureshi, you have your 10-minute rebuttal. Guys, uh, I'm going to start off where he start off, started off in talking about agnosticism in my claims to not know and how this is an in, in inferior position because if I don't know something, then how can I possibly talk about it? Um, well, well, how I want to respond to that was, especially in my opening, opening statement, I, I tried to define agnosticism and maybe I didn't articulate well enough what, what, what I meant by it. <coughs> being an agnostic theist or being an agnostic in general. The reality of the situation, there are things that we know and things that we don't know. Both of these realities exist within each and every person. The question is, what are the things that we know or claim, or claim to know? And what are the things that we don't know and we might have beliefs about? And so but that is completely possible to know something and yet not know something else and have beliefs about it. And so when I claim to be an agnostic, I'm claiming that I do not know what the ultimate reality behind our existence is. I don't claim to know what happens to us when we die. Ontologically, I do not claim to know what God is. And I think theologians of all philo philosophical, or uh, philosophies based on all theological backgrounds would admit that. Muslims call it ilm al knowledge of the unseen. I don't know what it is. I don't know what God is. I don't know what angels are. Have you, any of you ever seen angels? Do you know what an angel is? Do you know what heaven looks like? Do you know what hell looks like? Do you know what God looks like? No, we don't know these things. And it's okay not to know these things have belief, and have beliefs about them, A. Decipher what we know from what we believe. Admit humbly that we don't know these things. And then become open to the possibilities pertaining to what, might, what they might entail. So, the only thing that I'm claiming is I don't know what the ultimate reality behind our existence is. In terms of my belief in God, he says that, well, he, he invented God according to his imagination. No. I'm talking about, when I talk about imagination, I'm talking about the possibilities behind those big questions. What is God? What happens to us when we die? If I don't know what those things are, I can use my imagination to think about the possibilities for those questions. But the God that I've known is not a belief that I have. The God that I've known is an internal, mystical, direct knowledge. It's a gnosis. William Lane Craig says that each and every human being has that within them as well. And they can come to know God. Bob Siegel, who came before me, uh, said the same thing. That the way to know God, the best evidence for God, is through subjective, personal approach. And I believe that I have a knowledge of the divine through my very being, through my very core, through my very existence, through my experiences of reality, life, existence. I believe that I have the same gnosis that each and every other human being has, and that this is universal. And William Lane Craig would also believe that this is a universal according to his own statements. He said, not to, to go on emotional feelings. And I completely agree. Philosophy uh, and logical uh, uh, fallacies would state that appeal to emotion is not a good way of, of uh, and in fact, it's a fallacious way of, of thinking about something. And so I'm not asking anybody to go on emotions. Although emotions are real, they're experiential, and they do matter about reality. The way that we feel, the way that the, the things that we experience that involve emotions, and they matter. Why do they matter? Because we're experiencing them in time and space. But they don't have anything to do with what's true. That's what philosophy says. When it comes to what's true, I'm asking us to think about this rationally. That is to use deductive reasoning. So how can we use deductive reasoning when it comes to universalism versus exclusive uh, salvation? And what I asked you was, that why are we going to heaven? 
there, there, there's two reasons. We are wretched, sinful creatures, and that we fail to believe in the right doctrines in order to be saved. Now, original sin says that everyone is a wretched sinner. Everyone is, their, their actions are like filthy rags, that, they're, that anything that they could, could, good, that they could possibly do is thought of as an act of iniquity by, by, by God. So, the only way to be saved from this condition, and not just from this condition because you deserve to go to hell, God created you this way. God created you this way because Adam and Eve did what they did. And, and, and that's, that's where, where, where the issue really comes to. Is that if an omniscient, all-knowing God must have known prior to creating Adam and Eve that they would sin. He knew before he even created them that they would sin. He absolutely knew. And he refused to create a different situation. Instead, he created man with the capacity to sin. Adam and Eve had the capacity to sin. Created man with the capacity for temptation. Created the external stimuli that tempts us. And additionally created the serpent or satanic being as another obstruction. Therefore, created the precise circumstances for them to sin. And a matter of fact, the Bible says that all of humanity were in Adam when he sinned. Meaning that if you were in Adam place, you would have done the same thing. That's called determinism. There's no other way. There's no way out. If God created us with this nature to sin. And the only way you can be saved is through a belief that, G that, that an event occurred in time and space 2,000 years ago. That's the only way. Mental gymnastics, a conceptualization has nothing to do with your journey, nothing to do with you, with, 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 with growth, with living life, and experiencing all the things that you're experiencing that I, that, that I talked about. So this isn't about emotional feelings, this is about rational thought. Do you honestly believe the reason why the breath, all of humanity are going to hell, where they're going to be tortured for eternity, is because they failed to have the right beliefs? They failed God's theological exam. You are guilty of thought crime. Because you couldn't use your mind to figure out the mysteries behind reality. And God created you with all of these determining factors, these emotional attachments to cultures and religions and thoughts and ideas, all of this determinism going into how you perceive reality. And that's why you deserve to go to hell. This isn't, emo this isn't just emotional. You know, thinking about my own parents being tormented in hell, of course that's emotional. It is. Or my best friends who just don't believe what I believe, that they're going to be tormented. Why would God do such a thing? Yes, it's emotional. But the question, why would God do such a thing? Why would he create a system where people would be tortured and tormented in the first place? What are we accusing God of here? This isn't just emotional, it's deductive reasoning. Logic. A person, he says, uh, Lewis says that a person who is deceived doesn't know that he's deceived. Well, if he doesn't know that he's deceived, how is he supposed to act otherwise? How is it his, his fault? If he doesn't even realize that he's deceived, how is it his fault? How can God possibly judge him? How many minutes do I have? You have one minute and eight seconds. Okay. Uh, so, so the last two minutes, I want, I want to, he, he asked me what the ego is, is it just a force, is it a person? Again, these are the questions that we don't have answers for. I don't have answers for them, nor does anybody else on the face of this planet. You don't know the, the, the answer to that question every bit, every bit as I don't. There's things that we know, things that we don't know. There's things that we pretend to know. But in reality, <laughs> we only believe things about these situations. So I can talk about my imagination and the possibilities about the, what the ego entails, or what God might entail, or what the afterlife might entail, but that's not a gnosis that any of us have. We simply have beliefs about these kinds of things. 
And that's why I think the universal experience of God is more important than beliefs that we have about what's going on. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't think about possibilities. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't have beliefs, but decipher what you know from what you believe. And don't judge anyone based on their perception of reality. What, what, what another person believes is based on what appears to be true to them. Thank you, Mr. Cresci. And now, Mr. I just want to quote Farhan to himself. On his own website, with the title, My Narrative, What I Believe, Why I Left Islam, Why I Debate, etc., Farhan Qureshi, where he says, Universalism. Universalism does not posit that two contradictory religions or perspectives are equally true, which would be valid, the law of non-contradiction. Rather, he says, contradictory dogmas are not important. Well, how convenient. Because the question is going to be, well, then whose do we choose and why? You're going to see that his pride, not his humbleness, his pride dictates that you put away your dogmas and agree with his, and then we're universal. Now we can have kumbaya when you agree with his presuppositions, not the other way around. That's very convenient. He says, the spiritual connection and transformation that one derives from any religion is what matters and happens to be equally accessible through multiple avenues. Well, fine. Then under agnosticism, his words, he says, agnosticism is the position of not knowing. And he's made that clear. And from this premise of not knowing, being open to po the possibilities. The possibilities of what? Some philosopher once said, nothing is the stuff that rocks dream of. How does somebody with no knowledge even take the first step? See, he's not an agnostic in a true sense. And he, said, he made that clear. I don't think he realizes that some of them act if they are deceived, if they don't know they're deceived. Well, the Bible makes that very clear, answers the question. It is self-deception where you suppress the truth and unrighteousness because of the wickedness of your heart. The truth is presented to you and you put it down. You suppress it. It's like a person that goes to the doctor and the doctor says you have cancer. No, I don't. But here's the report. Here are the results. I, I don't believe that. Or better yet, the man that goes to the doctor says, doctor, I'm dead. The doctor's like, whoa. But you just walked into my office. He's all, I'm dead. And the doctor's like, well, no, you can't be dead. You're talking to me, and you walk into my office. And he says, I don't care. I'm dead. And so the doctor scratches his head, and he thinks, how can I convince this man otherwise? And he asks the man a question. Well, let me ask you, do dead men bleed? He says, no. He says, let me see your finger. The doctor pricks his finger. It starts to bleed. And the guy looks at it, he says, well, I'll be. Dead men do bleed. <laughs> now, that is taking the truth that is right in front of your face and suppressing it because of your biased presuppositions. This is self-deception. Or like the mother who has a child who steals something, and she just won't believe it. The proof is there. The police have the report, but my son would never do that, couldn't do that. In spite of the evidence, the proofs, the infallible, incontrovertible evidence, they <coughs> deny it. That is what the Bible declares as self-deception. When the atheist says there is no God, by definition, they are boasting that they know universal truths. They have an absolute knowledge of all of reality. Perfectly, consistently, at all times and all places, without fail, in order to make that universal claim, there is no God. And then you ask me, what's in my back pocket? Well, I don't know. But yet you boast that God does not exist anywhere in the universe? Then we've got to ask, what kind of a God are you talking about? For Han is speaking about Christian terms, or using Christian terminology, but he's not representing Christianity here tonight. Be not deceived. The things he, has, he is presenting as Christian is not Christianity. 